Mic check, mic check, one, two, what it is, what's good, it's the Mic Up Students, and we're back with another episode, Hadden. season four, I'm the home, if you didn't know, Mac Busy, I don't even know what uh, episode this is, Mac Busy done did it again, episode four, four. four. There four. It is. courtesy of the producer, I didn't there remember that myself, but we got a special guest today, if you didn't already know, if you're not, if you're listening and not visualizing, you're not watching a YouTube clip, we got a special guest today, and we're going to allow him to introduce himself, go ahead. I appreciate it, Bill A. Bear Jr., New Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. Good to be here. Perfect, absolutely. perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. So first question is, what is that? What <laughs> are those two titles? Yeah. Because those are names, but for a regular right. student that just walks through the campus every day and just does their work and goes home, yeah. what, what does that mean to them? So you can sort of separate it out. So the Associate Vice President role has oversight over, over units that directly impact students' lives. And you know, research has showed that 70% of the student experience or their learning happens outside of a classroom. And so all of these different areas, be it you know, academic advising, careers, organization and leadership, you name it, it's just I'm sitting on it as a president represented up on, a, on the board for ASI, strategic student programs, housing, project rebound, all of those areas fall under the associate vice president umbrella for, um, the Student Affairs Office. And then you have the Dean of Students position, yeah. which I know we're going to talk about, and that is more encompassing of the entire campus as um, it's a title, but it's also an office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. perfect. So, cause, so look, because I feel like a lot of people don't really know who the Dean of Students is. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that people understand and recognize, okay, there's actually a dean of students. It's yeah. like he's even he's right here What's with the us. role in that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so a dean of students, um, and I'm glad you asked that because there's a lot of mis mis uh, misperceptions about the role. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, whenever it was like you got you have to go see the dean, yeah, the dean of students, thing. it yep. was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It yep. was like you in trouble. Yep. Um, yes, conduct falls under this umbrella, but we have someone running the contact office. The dean of students, in fact, is supposed to be the conduit to leadership on campus. You're mm -hmm. supposed to be the students, all students, the advocate. Students. You're supposed to be the liaison to other offices and areas and really help the students navigate this institution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks don't know that. They just think, man, yeah. I gotta go see the dean yep. for X, Y, and Z. But that is not the traditional sense of the role. And that's definitely not the role I'm gonna play here. Mm -hmm. um, so that pretty much gives you a little, little yeah. idea about the role. I was actually really cool with my dean in high school. Vogel, dean you, had a, Vogel. you had a dean in high school. Yeah, dean, dean of students. I didn't have Vogel. a dean, dean oh, in yeah. high school. We had a, we had a, we had a, uh, um, we had a principal. principal. We had a principal. Yeah, we had a principal, a dean, and a president of the college or so, the school. Speaking of principals in elementary school, my principal got arrested for selling drugs. Wow. So my entire, uh, <laughs> I used to get suspended a lot. <laughs> That's Dude, not something you should be proud kidding. of. <laughs> right, bragging. No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> no, no, this is what I'm this is what I'm getting to though. All right, go in ahead. elementary school, I was, you know, I used to get in a lot of trouble. I was a troublemaker or whatever. That's uh, and it's understandable. I used to end up in the principal office all the time. Mm -hmm. Eric Dean Lewis. That was his name. Another, Eric Dean Lewis. Another understandable uh, fact that you were a troublemaker. I was he a drove, troublemaker. He drove him to the. Yeah. No, I, I used to get my recess trip from me. All type of stuff. All of that. For, for reasons I thought was you I, know. I was gonna say it was. It, there were valid reasons. No, no, they was BS to me. But <laughs> I guess to them it was valid reasons. Whatever you want to call it. Wow. And then I got to the sixth grade, right? And I'm like driving because my school was down the street from my house at the time, my elementary school. And my mom was taking me back from school, and we see a bunch of camera crews and police and stuff. And we're like, huh. We get home, we watch the news. Yeah, the principal of Montague Elementary School has been arrested for selling methamphetamines and all type of stuff. <laughs> so then they called in a bunch of students. <laughs> they called in a bunch of students to ask about them and, and, and do like a character check or whatever. Mm -hmm. With parental permission, obviously. And then they cleared our records. All my, you know, everything I got in trouble for that he signed off on got cleared because they found out he wow. was using too and he kept stuff in his office wow they raided his office and they found stuff so yeah that's i had a uh, walter white as my principal in elementary school that's walter crazy white. breaking bad the drug <laughs> deal yep yep i had walter white <laughs> wow <laughs> what else does that mean yeah oh my God. but yeah that's my that's where i got news, yeah. i'm telling you i was on the news that's crazy. There's a video out there somewhere. CBS Five. Check me out. Wow. All right. I don't well, I didn't have that, but I had a whole year of school where everybody I had was a sub. That oh, was wow. horrible, man. Wow. One That's of my, tough. one of my actually, well, actually one of my teachers. Uh, it was in, it was a high school sophomore year. My class was so bad because so the way it was broken up, it was like everybody had different class at different time. But for our class, the it was biology. This class had all the 
just ganging them, all of them. Ganging them. Ganging them, all of them. They, my my teacher, I'm not going to say his name, but my teacher left, said, I'm done. <laughs> and we got, <laughs> we got a, I kid you not, and we got a sub for the rest of the, and then the wow. sub, sub left. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Man, V A L L. Yeah, bro. It was, all right, bro. Why were they leaving? <laughs> all right, bro. Because it was That's so bestest. <laughs> <laughs> why, why were they running out the building? <laughs> Just leaving like that, man. He said asbestos. So I'm gonna be. Asbestos. I'm gonna oh. be real. However, it had really nothing. It just honestly was everybody was just kind of just trampling over the dude. I low key felt bad for him because you feel me. He was new. I think it was like his first time. At the, yeah, it was his first time at the school, so he was the first time substitute at the school. It wasn't like uh, somebody that they had gotten uh, in previous times. Okay. And it's just, they was just running all over him, That's trampling tough. him. That's tough. Man. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hate to admit I was responsible for a teacher leaving in the middle of the day for good. <laughs> we were, <laughs> for good? For good. For good. I was I responsible. There was a couple of them, man. I just... You know, I wasn't a bad kid, you know. <laughs> but what happened Wait, is, said a, I just, wasn't a bad I just, kid. I just felt I was too old to be playing 7-Up. You remember the 7-Up game? <laughs> yeah, you we gotta. Were, people would have facial hair, man. You playing 7-Up. <laughs> and what ended up happening is she turned the lights out. <sighs> and I was trying to be a jokester, and I wouldn't put my thumb, however your thumb's supposed to start. Right <laughs> and I wouldn't do it. And she kept coming by either pulling it or pushing it. I don't remember. And we got into it. And she says, I've had it. And she left. And then the next week, they said she quit. <laughs> <laughs> Over seven up. Seven up, man. Yeah. Heads up, old. seven up. That's what's called. Yeah, heads up, yeah. Seven up, yeah. Man, it's, it's got to be an age cut off of that. <laughs> age. Just a little too old for that, man. Because she was, you know, she didn't have any content, so she had to come up with something. <laughs> oh, oh God. She just played a game from her, her you yeah. know, one of her favorite pastimes. Okay, <laughs> that's not, not where I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't play that in my house. That does, that does, that oh, that's is. funny. Yeah, no, my my day was pretty cool though. I used to, I got sent there one time because one of my teachers, I, I say he was being discriminatory, but um, yeah, he just, uh, he sucked. <laughs> He's just rough. He just, he just sucked. Wow. So, yeah. No, we didn't have deans. No, I had deans. I had principals and vice principals. But let's, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. So what are some things that draw you to doing work like this? You know, what what's inspired your career in um, education? Um, so when I got, when I finished my undergrad, I was going to. He's got, I I know, you got, my, to, my got a pretty important phone call there. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I already put the. I already put it on. Do not disturb. Trying to get all to you. It's, I'm saying. It's clearly not the producer calling. <laughs> when I, I don't got the number saved, so I'm not. I'm not getting, <laughs> <laughs> His phone went off like three times already. I don't. I don't know. Some on my headphones. <laughs> um, but no, when I was an undergrad, there was a uh, vice president of student affairs, Bruce Swinburne, RIP, and this dude used to be so visible. Like, he'd be – I could see him sitting down at a football – from my football bench watching him go up in the stands with an eight-piece suit on, just walking around. Mm. Just said, everyone – You said eight-piece suit? Yeah. He had, What's an eight-piece suit? He had suit? two vests. A, I feel like a cummerbund. I don't know. He had a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff. But he was he was, he was, he was, he was, he was suited up. So I used to just watch him. I didn't really know him. And then finally I got to know him a little bit. And when I was graduating, he said, I said, I'm going to Ohio State to be a, a GA, a, a football coach. And he was like, no, nah, man, you need to go in higher ed. Mm. And then he started talking about qualities. And that's, I had gotten to know him. He started talking about qualities and whatnot. I said, I never thought about that. And so I just did some research on it. And I said, I definitely don't want to be um, on the faculty side. I want to be, I like the student experience. Mm -hmm. um, even though the faculty, a bit, you know what I mean, academic side. Mm -hmm. And so... And I started doing my research, and uh, I ended up switching to my grad program to higher education, oh, wow. educational administration. And I learned that um, <clears throat> it's a journey, in particular, f for the for the for the VP or the assistant VP, because you want to be a. I'm big on um, on mapping out students mm -hmm. students' experience. So from the second they make foot make contact with the institution until the second they graduate making sure it's consistent across the board. Mm -hmm. And if there's hiccups, there's little gaps in there, we need to do some sort of an analysis and find out why that student is, isn't being retained or persistent. Mm -hmm. And so I got deep into that and did all my research on that at the master's level. And next thing you know, man, I was, bam, I was at the University of Wisconsin <laughs> for my first job. That's a 48,000 seat campus. That's crazy. You and um, what I started doing, my mentor at the time at Madison was the vice chancellor. He was a big, big boy. And he said, whatever you do, as you elevate, 
at some point you're going to settle, but when you, as you elevate, mm -hmm. make sure that you don't stay too long in one spot or they're going to pigeonhole you, especially something mm -hmm. with like diversity in the title and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, you know, I started out, they handed me the keys to an empty room mm -hmm. and they said, we need you to create a center for cultural enrichment, which is still there today. And that was my first gig. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting snatched up to different areas. Like they wanted to create it, an advising center. Mm -hmm. I snatched up for that. I got snatched up for his assistant dean position, and then I start moving around, mm -hmm. and then finally, man, I just you know just got really elevated. Um, and the, the the joy of it is was the mentoring aspect, the the seeing those students cross the stage, and you know all their problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm big on barriers. I'm big on looking at barriers. I'm big on coming up with interventions. Mm -hmm. That's how I live my life. You yeah. know, it's just really that's my lens. Is what is preventing this from happening, and how can I be of help? And in this role, you know, I've had some pretty interesting positions, man. Like, I was in Madison for most of my career. Yeah. But Madison is so big, you need a city bus to go to a meeting. You know, like, it's, mm. it's just, Dang. I'm not exaggerating, like, to go to the engineering campus. Wow. So, it's the engineering I, campus, the, not yeah, building? Yeah, they have a campus, an mm. engineering campus. I worked in a business school. And that's all one part of one university? Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. University of Wisconsin at Madison is huge, right off the lakes. But I was blessed that I was able to move around and learn from some really strong people and lead some really strong teams, man, mm -hmm. and, and do the best I could to make a difference. And then I left Madison. Um, eventually, I took a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Feed the Children International. I don't know if you heard of that. They used to do all those late night commercials. Yeah. Um, and so I was, I was hired as their senior grants manager. And mm -hmm. I had a team, I had a whole wow. team of people in Chicago. So I was working with the White House. I had specific phones and computers. Um, <laughs> I was like, what they call PEPFAR grants. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Just Paul, you said you what were, year was this? I said like, you were working with the I White House. Find my resume. Yes, was it for those like PEPFAR grants. Yeah. Obama and them. No, man, this is pre-Obama. Oh, George yeah. Bush. All right, we can I keep going. Know. Hey, we, 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 <laughs> Bill, we, we Bill keep going. See, we can keep going. Bill, I come back to Obama though. Um, I talked to you about Obama, but Obama. the um, President Obama. <laughs> but what I end up doing is I took a leap of faith. And for two years, including when Haiti had that big earthquake, mm -hmm. you know, my, me and my team were instrumental in that. Yeah. And um, the White House gave me a blank check. It, they were panic stricken. I wasn't even filling out the forms all the way. And I was working from home. And it was like, just put something down. Because what do I know about cubic centimeters of how many protein bars get in a train car? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what they were saying to me. On the, I had two phones going and headsets. And they were like, you need to fill this. And I'm like, hey, man, this is order like five million of them things. And be done with it, right? Five million. But we were responsible uh, for a lot of, you know, I bought Jeeps for the people in the DR to get them around Haiti. Wow. That was incredible because I got, that's when I was out of country all the time with the founder of Feed the Children. Mm -hmm. All he wanted to do was hold a sick baby. I want to, I wanted to see these abandoned baby centers. I want to help these orphans. I found out porridge was a real thing. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it is. I didn't know it was a real thing, man. And so I op it opened my eyes. But at the end of the day, that experience strengthened me so much. Yeah, thanks. Because, you know, the way I was raised, I was bounced around in different environments, and and that's where I really developed my appreciation for diversity. And mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about racial or ethnic diversity. I'm talking about diversity of thought community and that sort of thing and that's that's helped drive this work um, but I eventually left Feed the Children and ended up being a vice president a, a senior vice president for the University of Wisconsin private college system so I was at the system level and there's 24 colleges mm -hmm. um, and so I had <coughs> impact there was I had seven areas on each campus I was responsible for Dang. to make sure they maintain their identities but at the same time let's get this I have something I call the equity agenda mm -hmm. you know in particular for black students like let's let's get folks even par and, and, and being afforded the same opportunities. So, mm -hmm. it's a lot to it. It's been a it's been a good a great journey, um, but but in this role, working with these leaders in these units and working with their teams, and you got to remember something. I bring a different perspective coming yeah. out here. Yeah. Right. And so I travel with boxes of stuff. I don't throw anything away. Ideas and programs and thoughts. Yeah. And so you know I only been here less than a month. So the more I learn about the institution. Definitely going to learn more about how my units interact with each other yeah. under the direction of Dr. Mills in terms of what he wants to lay out for the big plan. Um, I'm excited about where we're heading, man. And, yeah. and I just really, really want the office to thrive and grow and for folks to understand the role of the dean of students, which mm -hmm. is I'm an authentic person, period. But I'm, so I'm approachable. 
Yeah. Open door when it comes to students. I've stopped what I've doing in a heartbeat to meet with a student. Yeah, fact. Um, I don't like students going through red tape. That's barriers. I want to be able to make that call for that student. And so I just really am starting to meet with student groups. Um, I'm going to be having some conversations with ASI board members to really maybe get our website up to par yeah. and just really, you know, have it a little more dynamic. Yeah. And so yeah. folks understand the role because un under the AVP Dean of Students umbrella is all those wonderful areas mm -hmm. that touch students' lives. And that's why I came here. Yeah, absolutely. That was very well said. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, plan. it's his life, so Man. I mean, who going to tell it better? Yeah, I mean, so so speaking of your life, talking about Washington D.C. and yeah. Obama. Oh and yeah, Obama. We're, gonna, we're gonna get there. We're gonna start here. Where where where's the root? Where's the root of a? Uh, um, right, right. Where are you yeah, from? Just just kind of start start from where there. Where do you come from? Where do you come from? <laughs> I'm a I'm a big Seinfeld fan, and there was some dude stop a guy on the street and say, "Where are you from?" He was like, "Earth." So I'm from Earth. No, but um, with seriously, Earth, <laughs> Earth, Earth. Oh Earth. gosh. But but no, I uh. So my family, family uh, is from Louisiana, okay. Creole. Yeah, Creole. And um, made up of like 30 things. I just got Ancestries.com. I can't keep up. Mm. So that's what, that's what my family, family roots are. Um, my upbringing was in the city of Chicago, Southside. And I was fortunate enough um, that. I'm I sorry, had, just pause real mm -hmm. quick. Is that the name of the city? Chicago? called Southside in no. Chicago. No, no. Chicago is the city. Yeah, they just say you hear that in the sometimes? South. Side I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm Southside. Yeah, because yeah, Southside South is, is it's the biggest side and it's the best side. And, it's the, you it's know, the direction. You know, even though I did live in the West Side for a little bit, that's where all the projects were. Yeah, yeah. but big brick um, building. Yeah, they they down now, Rockwell. But um, so I stayed in Southside and we moved a lot. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, single mother, four sisters, and me, and really, you know. She was doing her thing, and um, I was first gen, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, by the time I got out of undergrad, moms had already been damn near beat me to her first degree. Mm. And she has two doctorates mm. in two totally different areas. She's That's a clinical amazing. psychologist, and she's a cultural anthropologist, and she can speak five African languages, man. That's so, wow, do you know? Dope. Do you know the five Af African languages? She does. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know how to spell them. <laughs> I know she, she knows Hosa that starts with an X. You know, oh, just like why really, she speaks Kosa. Yeah. 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 Kosa. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Kosa. Why, why did she start? She was like, I didn't, uh, Kosa. No, I didn't say that. I said no, no. Kosa. You kind of did. All no, no, once. No, no, but you kind of did. Well, I try to I figure out the Hosa. sound first. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, but the X is... It's, 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 it's not Zosa. Yeah. It's a C? Kosa? No, it's like a click. Oh. Yeah. These guys must be crazy. You ever seen that movie? That's what they speak in... In the Black Panther, that's yeah. the language that yeah. they're emulating. Yeah, but 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 yeah, seriously, it's it's some beautiful languages, man. They're all very beautiful, and she she's an expert in that stuff. She spent, she went to Fort Hare, which is where Mandela went. Mm. Um, so she she stayed out there for her program, yeah. and she spent a lot of time <clears> in Zimbabwe. <throat> anyway, so moms moms is you know major influence in my life, and she did she raised some some kids that are doing it. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we bounced around a lot. I did get to spend significant time with my uncles who were somebody's, you know, had one uncle, rest in peace, um, Uncle George. And this is when I started living in Memphis, Dallas. <coughs> you know, I was I was born in Honolulu on the Air Force Base. See. Um, I've lived in Vegas, Rome, New York, um, different bases. And he was, you ever heard of the AWAC? No. you probably seen a picture of it. Okay, so the a AWAC is a military plane. Mm -hmm. and it has a giant dome over that just twirls. I'm sure you've seen a picture of it. I don't think I have. Oh, wow. wow. So mm -hmm. you, you will see, Google it. Okay. Not right now. And then. Um, <laughs> I didn't even reach my it, phone. It, <laughs> oh, really? it could just hover, man. Mm -hmm. and, and it's incredible. He was the chief engineer for that. Mm -hmm. So he had major mm -hmm. props on his base. Then my Uncle Roscoe, who's my last living uncle right now, he's, he's, he's hanging in there. His life was really interesting. You know, he didn't go to college. He was a military guy, big time. He ended up working for the Secret Service. He guarded four presidents. Wow, wow. Um, he was, um, he was a, when, when Reagan got shot, he was all up in the picture because we had enough U.S. News and World Reports you mm -hmm. know, to die for. But he ended up being a special CIA special agent, man. Oh, wow. And so he had his life and his stories. He would never talk about it. Yeah, I emailed him from college. I'd be like, how's things, how's work? He's like, how your mama doing? He never, <laughs> he refused. Avoided. Now, all of a sudden, he get Facebook. He got special agent retired on that. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it, I really, it really do be different, like, when it comes, I think, when you're done. Because my dad, he was actually at the, um, at a, a tire, um, like, Jiffy Lube or Speedy or something like that. And he was sitting next to this dude who was in the KGB. 
Oh wow. Yeah. <clears throat> retired retired kitchen. He was going on. He was just telling this story. Yeah, just talking. Shame. Just going on, talking about <laughs> everything he used to do. I wish my uncle talked about the stuff, man, because i I didn't know he was always gone. Mm. And my auntie, she used to be like, nobody really knows what he does. But this is when I knew something. something and I lived with him for a while. This is when I knew something interesting because when he lived at an Air Force base in Dallas, which is called Carswell, it's closed down now. Me and my cousin were outside throwing charcoal at cars, just being bad. <laughs> we were. That's what we were charcoal doing until this car. cab driver got out with a shotgun. We chilled. Whoa. Out. But, okay. So, God. Anyway, <laughs> he's gonna shoot some kids. So, no, he was scaring us. But everybody, I remember that wow. vividly throwing charcoal, and I could throw. I mean, I probably so, remember the double barrel <laughs> shotgun too. I probably remember that too. Fact. I don't think I would have forgot that one. Oh, I remember his boots. That's all I remember. But every home, this is off base. Every home had like. MSG Jackson, Master Sergeant, or, you know, whatever, whatever. His had Mr. Mm. And I used to always wonder, what does this man do? Yeah. But anyway, he was, a, he was a major influence in my life. He still is. I still talk to him. Um, but those those folks, you I'm know, sorry, really this, helped. This to do with the shotgun? No, man, that was a cabbie. Yeah. We threw some charcoal at his car. Oh, the. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, I deviated quickly. The, 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 the cab? <laughs> the cab driver. Is the guy who, who you look up to? No, my uncle is oh, okay. the, the agent. Got you. I, I switched gears. Yeah. yeah. So his, 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 <laughs> I, I got that. His though. home. At the base. I was just saying how his home, it was something interesting because he just had Mr. And everybody uh, else's house had like the the acronym for that, whatever their rank was. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so, you know, um, and he didn't live in Chicago, but he got me situated, hooked me up with the right people, man. You know, in Dallas. Um, yeah. And so it was it was really um, Chicago's home. You know, Chicago's that's why I pledged. Home. That's where um, I met a lot of interesting people. You know, moms is still there, and it's just it's, it's home. And let it, it, also, I know she said, let, let, let I know she said, yeah, pledge. Let, let them know what organization you're part of, man. Omega Psi Phi Fraternity uh, Incorporated, uh, sir. A roof. A roof. That's a shame. <laughs> oh, you say it's a shame? Why you say it's a shame, Malachi? Man, you well, I told him everybody make mistakes, so I'm not <laughs> mad at it. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. We all part of the oh, night. Oh, he funny. said we all. Yeah, I, y'all I, I, all hey, part hey, of the night. My best uh, roommates I ever had were Phi Beta Sigma, man. My cousin used to play for the Bears, Tyrone. He was a Sigma. Um, oh, wow. And I get along with all the Sigmas. There's some yeah. folks I don't get along with at other organizations. But <laughs> That's facts. Keep it moving. That's facts. So, yeah, Chicago. Chicago's Chicago the place, man. It, hey, fun fact. Blue fire. Yeah, yeah, it made me think about this. So, yeah. I've never known my biological father. Okay. Um, I know he's still with us. I think he's like Calypso sink on a cruise ship somewhere. He's mm. he, he's he's he. I got records with his name on it. Oh, wow. You know, our family likes likes to sing. Well, um, I'm I'm sorry. Hold on. You said you have records. Yeah. He, so he's a Calypso singer. You said no. He's he was artist? real, like a R and B. Oh. So he wow. he was a ghostwriter. He like my girl. Like he he. I have pictures I could show <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm about to say hold on. No, I'm serious. Hi. Hey, hey, flag on the plate. <laughs> Red cards. See, okay, look. You can't this, just skip this, over this. There's something about a, Bill. That's Let me one finish. Thing I need he, to tends, know. he tends to just say something really yeah. big I don't and know then just flies past it. If y'all didn't just notice, he was like, Yeah, my dad, he used to be a ghostwriter. And he said, You know, my like, girl, my, you talking about my girl by the, tem- by the Temptations? Yes. So okay. I have a picture of him on a train with Marvin Gaye <laughs> riding around, but I have records with his name on it. He had, we have the same name with Junior. Yeah. But I've never known him ever. Yeah. And they got divorced when I was like nine months. But here's the thing. I just found out, because this, you know, Emmett Till, people, they started to get these young folks understand who Emmett Till is. They had the yeah. little movie. Now they had a big movie coming out. Mm-hmm. So my mom's told me that he went to school with Emmett Till. And I said, really? Wow. It's called Jane McCosh. It's, it's still open. It's, a, it's an elementary school. Mm-hmm. So he was in the class with Emmett Till, because Emmett Till, when he was murdered, they had just graduated elementary school. He went to Mississippi mm. for the summer, mm. so he never experienced high school. But my my father, biological father, was part of his class. Man, if you know how many letters I'm sending him, I'm trying to find a class photo. Yeah. Man, and I just want a class photo with him with Emmett Till. Yeah, you know, that's, because that's they gave me the chills. Like, wow, this man yeah. and, he, and, and his classmates have to deal with this. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. But I I don't know him. I never talked to him. But mom's like, yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. James Bukash, so um, that's that is that's deep. That's heavy. I went to the same school as her. Cool. Man, she got it on my shirt right here. Hey, you that's one you, of my missing. favorite artists, man. Yeah, she's uh, she's from Vallejo. Went to the she, same she school. She went there. Yeah, she went to SBSP? North Hills. No, 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 North Hills. In my elementary school. SPSV. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, but that was my high school. My elementary school was North Hills, in Vallejo. In fact, we actually had the same teacher. 
She had Mrs. Wright, and that was my teacher. Dang. Just we just, we just there at different times. Man, I'm her, if you're watching her, this, man. I make beats. I'm a producer. <laughs> all of that. I, I went to in. school. I went to school with somebody famous too. Who? I went to school with. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. You went to school with? Yeah, him? with somebody. Yeah, right. his name is Nahom. All right. All so right, so. so <laughs> With the same name as you? So continue on with yeah, what you yeah. was about to keep nah, going? No, no, that's, y'all don't know him? Nope. So hey, what else was you about to say? You're out. talking about uh, my girl. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So that was it. He, I know he was a ghostwriter. Um, it has something to do with the relationship going sour, I think. You're just giving away songs. Mm. And so the my girl is the one that throughout my childhood is what I heard. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of ghostwriting going on. You know, Smokey Robinson was writing all the Jackson 5 stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Smoke it. but he, he, I definitely have, I have a picture of him on the L with uh, Marvin Gaye. And I have a record in my phone and in my, the picture of it and w- with my name on it. I know that he, um, and he's still singing. He's on a cruise ship somewhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, hey. Shy was home. Moms are strong. All my sisters are doing great things. Um, That's amazing, man. You know, and we have a, you know, it's just, it, and it's some crazy stuff. You mentioned Obama. Or you getting you, into that? You, you, men, you mentioned Obama. Well, I was, yeah. I, I had a few names, a few Oh, go few ahead. Let's running the show. Nah, start with Obama. Let's start with That's that. a good start. Obama's yeah. that guy, man. I, I know. All right, so I'm about to drop some stuff on y'all. And it's, <coughs> and it's I, I told you, I told him, I tell him all the time, my life is like a sign for the episode. I, I bet. I, Every I'm day coming. something crazy happens. And yeah. I don't embellish anything. I'm dramatic with minds. And I'm just like, this has all happened by accident. How do you know these famous people? I don't bump into them in a store. <laughs> or work at the University of Wisconsin football program and all them dudes went to the league. That's how you know them, right? Yeah. But President Obama's interesting. So I was baptized. We grew up in a church. Um, it's, it's called Trinity in Chicago. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to see if this name rings a bell. Jeremiah Wright, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Does it ring a bell? Kind of. Okay, he's frat brother. He baptized me. So Jeremiah, Reverend Jeremiah Wright is the brother that got all the heat when Obama was running, saying he was at a Semitic. Oh, and he wow. had to separate from him. It was big during his campaign. The Republicans, you know, yeah. they, they played that up. <clears throat> so that's, that's a great man. He's in Africa right now. And so um, that church is home to Jennifer Hudson. Heard her sing on Christmas once. Man, common. It's I'm it's 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 a it's a mega church in Chicago. They got yeah. people out the street directing you, and it's huge. Mm-hmm. And um, it's so big. The choir's so big, and they all can't take cloth down. The choir's so big. They got mm-hmm. two drummers, mm-hmm. wrapped Dang. encased in plastic. Yeah, it's, you got We got. I got to get y'all there, man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a, a new young pastor who went to Morehouse, I think. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> said, yeah, it's all right. we all make mistakes. <laughs> but the, here's the, here's the interesting thing about about <laughs> President Obama. <All> right. <laughs> So when I was young, younger, Obama, <laughs> he was he was like working in the community. Yeah. And so you know they, uh, Reverend Wright was always good at pointing out folk because mm-hmm. you'd be like, who's he is, you know? And then all of a sudden he became a state senator, mm. just being himself, he was a regular guy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So then he did the Democratic that speech for the Democratic convention, mm-hmm. and that's before he ran for. I think I don't even think he was a senator. I think he was like at a state level. Mm-hmm. And people were like, this man will be president one day. Well, what happened is, you know, in Baptist <laughs> churches, at the end of service, they want you to hug and shake hands. Yeah. Mm-mm. They had a line wrapped around the, ch- the church to say, shake one man's hand. Obama. Yep. And he had, the kids were real young. And then he started having folks sitting behind him with the headsets on. And I'm like, okay, this is getting real. This yeah. dude, this dude, they need to watch him. I'm thinking someone's going to shoot him or something. Yeah. And so once he became centered, he sat upstairs. And then what, that was it. That he, he couldn't get any peace. Mm. And so he didn't come back to the church. Dang. That church. Yeah. But, um, except like the visit. But here's the thing about this, this man. This is a wonderful man. When you meet him, when I was in, a couple of real quick stories about him. So, and this is real. So when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, my boy coaches a high school football team there. Coach La, La Fala High School. I got pictures of this. So it was a kid on my AAU basketball team who played on that team. And... I pulled some strings because Obama was coming to his school, mm-hmm. James C. Wright Middle School. He was coming. And I pulled some strings to get him a private audience. And I do have the picture. I blew it up with him. It's like three or four kids in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Obama left there, and they had the whole street was lined with sanitation trucks. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. But when he left there, he drove by. And I'll tell you how I asked him to do this in a minute. He drove by where the football team was practicing. And only one person knew. 
a dude used to be like, man, it was like Secret Service was popping up out of the ground because he literally, that, that motorcade came on a side street in the hood in Madison. Mm -hmm. And he got out and they walked, he walked all the way to that practice and took mad pictures. And I have them all, mad pictures. Dang. That's how real he is, right? Yeah. Um, but the reason that the connection was made is that, see if y'all can follow me on this one. So my sister in D.C., mm -hmm. she's a somebody. My sister was a global VP for Hershey. She and all, Hershey, Hershey Chocolate, the whole company, oh, wow. and then she was head of all their safety. Okay, now I need to be a part of your family. No, no, hold, hold on. Now she just left. She's the same role as Smuckers, Smuckers mm -hmm. in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Her husband, okay, he just got sworn in. He's the general counsel for HUD. Okay, he was the youngest lawyer, Yelp, Harvard educated, the youngest lawyer on the Making Homes Affordable Act. And he, he is officially the general wow. counsel for HUD, okay? Wow. Now, here's the thing with his family. His grandfather just passed. He was one of the last remaining Tuskegee Airmen, Papa wow. Gee. Wow, he crazy. flipped the coin at the Super Bowl three years ago. Smooth, he was like 104. The man could dance, boy. He could dance. <laughs> 104. He, he was smooth. I, you know, he's a good man. Oh, now his, his, his sister, this is where Obama come in. His sister is married to a man named Mike Stratmanis. Mike Stratmanis was Obama's chief of staff oh, wow. in Chicago. <laughs> he went with him to the White House for a while. Then he went home. to He's leading his, um, the building he's building, his library and all of that, the center. So that's how there's this connection of how to get to somebody. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just a just happened. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's not like I looked for it. But I've been Jeez. blessed. That I've, I've shaken the hands of three presidents, man. And it's just like, I'm big on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I love the whole Secret Service thing. I know all about how that stuff works, stuff dropping out. I know all that. I'm big on how they build buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, just like it's the behind the scenes. But when you're around one of those people, man, it's, it's, it's some stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Dogs coming in three, four days ahead, sleeping in the building. It's a lot going on. Jeez. But um, anyway, that's my Obama story. Yeah. Good man. Barack. Good man. Technically, if you think about it, he's famous by association. No, I just have. Who is? No, I'm just I'm just stories. It's famous by association. I'm just stories. I but they're good that. stories. I, okay, good so stories. actually, maybe not even by association. There's something you, you threw out there last week, probably. You, you know, one of the people you named at the church, man. Common. Common. One of my favorite Common. rappers of all time. Yes, sir. And you said you're on a, a cover. You, his first CD was Brother Can I Borrow a Dollar His name was Common Sense Common then. Sense He's sitting there with a cup There's a bunch of people behind him So Rosh Everybody lived by everybody He and my younger mm -hmm. sister are real close okay. And she's close with everybody Deion Cole My younger sister used to Deanna be a professional Cole, comedian. comedian She used to be a professional comedian So Monique was her mentor Wow And so um, Monique Common you know, I ran with his This guy. man just name dropped like three big yeah. names. Yeah. Deion Cole. There's one name I'm not going to drop. But yeah, Con yeah. No, I want yeah. you to. No, <laughs> no, nah, you know. nah. So he's he's, he's got bigger dark. problems right now. We're going to leave that one. Yeah, he's, he's got orange on right now. So, <laughs> comment. <laughs> comment. Um, hey, Thanksgiving. So, his. Uh, yeah. I yeah. ran all his guys. I went, I was in, gra when I was in grad school, they were undergrads. This was SIU. Mm, okay. So, I'm about, to, I'm about to drop my name on you. So my first little brother, I'm big on mentoring, man. So my mm -hmm. first little brother when I was in grad school was a freshman at SIU. His name's Dion Wilson, okay? Mm -hmm. So you affectionately probably know him as I, No ID. Okay, so mm -hmm. No ID, which is Dion backwards, incidentally. Yeah, so No I ID know that. Is, was my first little bro. And I actually dug up the tape he gave me yesterday because I used to try to be in a rap game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I have boxes of lyrics. I could, I could share, share them with y'all, but... <laughs> I used to sit up in his crib in Chicago, um, and this before he dropped out. And he'd put a record on, and I'd be in there saying my stuff. He'd be like, "Man, Sandy, a regular voice, man." But I, you know, but he, but anyway, he gave me a tape. Yeah. And he says, "Don't ever let anybody." Uh, he at the time he went by Two Piece Dark with Mild Sauce, and he went by Iman Slope when he left the other guy. Mm -hmm. So I would be rapping. This dude gave me a tape that was basically the real rough draft of. Common Sense First City, Brother Can I Borrow a Dollar. I have wow. it. I pulled it out. It's in a baggie. It's safe. I wow. broke the tabs He's off it immediately. <laughs> I'll let you see it. But but he wow. said, don't ever let use these beats. It has Isley Brother beats on there. And I was just like, that's what I practice my flow to, right? Yeah. Um, 
But one day he just broke my heart, man, because the dude was such a cool dude. He came running down. He, he I knew Com had left FAMU. He blew like fourteen thousand dollars signing bonus on a pool party. But then that's another story. Oh but he had left FAMU, um, and Dion came running down the stairs and he was like, "Hey, man, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm about to go do this." And I'm like, oh, "I was crushed." Yeah. But look at him now, right? No idea. And so the other part of that is Com had outed him. His name because he wanted to go his entire career. Now, you know, he did DTA and he's mm -hmm. done some stuff with her. But he even had a CD called The Black Album. But I think it was called The Black Album. Black something. I don't remember. Black Album, that's Jay-Z. That's Jay-Z. It's yeah. got something black in it. Black Sabbath, I don't know. Black Knight, whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I have it. But he wanted to go his whole career with no one knowing who he was. And you wouldn't know who he is. Mm -hmm. His name wasn't in anything. Credits yeah. to Tenoy Daddy. So one of those no CDs... Idea. I can't remember which one it is. I had to pull it out. Maybe like his fourth, comments fourth CD. I'm paraphrasing. It was like, you know, something like, I don't give a darn mm -hmm. what, what you say. People need to know who you are. Dion Wilson put him out there, man. Mm -hmm. And like ever since then, Dion started getting those contracts. Yeah. You know, working with Kanye and doing all the other stuff. And But anyway, that's crazy because that's accidental for me. That was yeah. the dude I mentored. I'm trying to be a rapper. And I didn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm playing two sports, barely in class. And I'm trying to like, he one of the greatest can, producers of all time. Man, bro. I'm telling you. No ID? Oh, I thought you were talking about All Kanye. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he I, dropped I, it. Have you heard the song yeah, Big Brother mm -hmm. on yeah. Graduation? Yeah. Big Brother was Big's okay, brother. I didn't ask you to sing it. I said, no ID I friend said, and Big's brother. Who was hip hop brother? I said, yes, I know. But he was a cool dude. He had the high top Gumby fade, man. Bobby and he was Brown. just he was just cool. <laughs> so anyway, that's my that's my little um, I just be stumbling into I was just listening people. to I was just listening to Life Water Like Water for Chocolate yesterday. It's deep, man. I'm yeah. going to tell you one of a, a, a song a lot of people ain't up on because I had to expose some people at a community center. G.O.D. With CeeLo. I ain't never heard it. Oh, my gosh, man. Dude, I'm, I'm going to let you borrow it. I, you can just read the lyrics. Yeah. And he's talking about, you know, it's, it's gaining one's definition of self. Mm -hmm. And he has, like, little verses in there like, you know, you know, as a child, be told to believe in Jesus because for me, he did die. Curiosity killed the cat. Like, he just, it gets deep. But mm. CeeLo's doing the hooks. And, it, and and when people hear it, they're like, oh, my gosh. And, it, and he's got him in slow, which mm -hmm. I love slow rap. Google it. G-O-D. Yeah, you would think. Communist. You would think. He in my top my 10, deep, 15. Man. Top 10, top deep. 15 for sure. Super yeah. slept on. Super slept on. He hasn't put, I mean, he dropped the album last year, actually. It was good, too. Same Same kind of thing. Slower. But that's how common is. You, you really got to listen for the content. Oh, I didn't talk about the album cover. So the album cover, all his guys I told you was was in school with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't really see that dude. Um, JB, all those guys, all those guys are nuts. We we I, we all were kind of crazy to be honest with you. I, I did some crazy stuff in college, man. But <laughs> seriously, like real on a dare. But um, <laughs> but this dare. dude, if you look at the pic, the picture, you are gonna see him in a black skull hat. I'm. I'm this complexion, so you ain't you ain't gonna miss me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't even know half of those dudes. Yeah. <laughs> He's but, for and, the and another little little fun fact, and I'm gonna leave comment alone. Go to that CD. It's a song called Charms Alarm. Mm -hmm. And during the break, they go, "It's blow pop time. It's blow pop time." Well, that's from our school because we were stupid, and we used to have to walk around with a charms pop, but you getting smacked in the chest. Mm -hmm. And so he 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 stole that from how we were functioning. Oh wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. college was wild. I, had, I was crazy in college. Crazy. Any any of them uh, dare stories that still uh, clean? Yep, <laughs> <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you clean. I'll give you two. One how I terrorized the entire campus. All right, wow. And then um. And what school is this at again? This one I was in. This is a, this isn't this is down in Illinois, man. It's down in Illinois. <laughs> Terror. Incidentally, I campus. play baseball, football down there. So we're gonna get to that too. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> <laughs> this this uh. So the one I'll share for sure is I terrorized the campus with um, balloons. So I played baseball. It's pretty good with mine. So they had sold these baseball like shaped water balloons. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm cutting to the chase with the story. So I had armed ev a whole bunch of people on campus from the 17th floor towers to the little towers with boxes and 17th boxes. 17th floor? Of, we had three 17th floor towers on one side of the campus. <laughs> but everybody oh, had, I had a little crew they had water balloons filled up. And we were tagging people with them randomly. Piece of people, couples. <laughs> <laughs> and, hold on. Hold on. And, but my goal was to make the police blotter but not be named. We had a little mm -hmm. thing called police blotter. Oh, wow. And so they would 
misidentifying people. And then Halloween was when it all came to a head. So Halloween, <laughs> this was big news. This was like the RAs was looking around, and there was some close calls, right? And I was I was pretty accurate with mine. <laughs> I was just pretty accurate. <laughs> and so one time, uh, my RA was, was a bruh. I wasn't a bruh then, but he was a bruh. They sat out on lawn chairs on Halloween, which is a big deal down there. Mm -hmm. And all their backs were to me, man. And I said, shit, I hit one of these RAs with this water balloon. I could get thrown off the team if I get caught. <laughs> so I passed. I started hitting dudes walking past them. <laughs> so <laughs> we, Close enough. we had escape hatches. So here's why. You had what? We, we knew where to get out. Oh, okay. And so here's why I got caught. It was, man, it was crazy. So I was in a TV lounge in the dark. And I and I, I saw a piece of man walking up to the, you know, just all innocent. <laughs> It's all like, innocent. And I actually went in the TV lines. People were watching TV. They didn't know what I was doing. And I said, I'm about to, I'm about to tag this dude. So I started clocking him, clocking him, clocking him. And then all of a sudden, I mean, it was, they were all hitting him, too, right upside his dome. And so <laughs> they were all hitting him. <laughs> all of them. And so the TV lines next to me, the lights came on. It said, my nickname was Hebes. Hebes, stay right there. And I was like, oh, uh, sit for that scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. It's a wrap. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. And so... They came and got nah, me. He said, that's it for that said, that's it for that scholarship. But, but here's how I got out of it. We had already planned this was the last night. I was the last one left with water balloons. Mm. And so I confessed that I found the water balloons in the TV lounge. They were just sitting there. And I said, this look like fun. I've been reading about it. And that's how I got off. <laughs> it looked like fun. <laughs> and so they, you know, they told me I was a copycat and I shouldn't be, you know, doing that. I should be a better person. Lead by example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be a follower. <laughs> hey, man, there was some comedy in that. Was. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that's that's one story. There's another time when um, I wasn't trying to hurt anybody. Okay. I wasn't. That's I'm not that kind of person. Hopefully. I'm a man of faith. But... <laughs> And for, for football, for home games, especially for Halloween, they used to, and they do this today, they used to lock you, they lock you in a hotel on Fridays for home games because they don't want you to get any mischief. Oh, wow. We snuck out, of course. Pe you know, people were in stores <laughs> buying things and doing whatever. But people were dressed up for Halloween. And so we're walking down the street in big disguises, man. Mm -hmm. I had a, remember the mask. Just remember the mask, okay? okay. I had a mask on, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> so this dude in front of me, I guess he was trying to be a cheap version of a mummy. He was totally wrapped in toilet paper. Wow. And so we having a conversation, like, I wonder if this dude has some clothes on him. So we, um, because it would have been hilarious if he didn't. And something unfortunate happened. So I said, I said, give me your lighter. <laughs> you say something unfortunate <laughs> something happened. Something unfortunate. Say, give me your lighter. Oh and I lit it, but it didn't do anything. It just fizzled out. It was horrible, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it would have been horrible if you would have cut on fire. <laughs> but no, that, wow. but, but no, I do want to real quick, real quick. I want to tell you the math story. Good, yeah. good. So, um, this was in, I was at a house party. Okay. And it was a Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And this was when I was older. And so I had the mask, like the Jim Carrey mask, and I had this black hat and whatever. You wouldn't know it's me. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a party and I said, I'm going to see how long I can go without talking and making people uncomfortable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went the whole thing. You try stuff like this. So I was I was inching up on people that I'm cool, and this one girl was just kind of, just, you know, it was it was weird. But I went through. I I survived like 40 minutes, and people huddled up. Who is that? Who is that? So what I did is I eventually left. I didn't talk at all. I went outside. I went and put my my gold boots on. Came back in there. Hey, where you been? We missed you. But, but it was great because it was a half hour. Everyone was uncomfortable. It was like a, it was <laughs> like it was great because everybody was. uncomfortable. It was like an experiment. Like how, yeah. who's gonna be the first one to say you need to tell us who you are? Bounce. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. what I would have done. If you was in a house, house party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would have done that, but they didn't. Do it. But anyway, just standing there like that. Totally mad. That's so. Anyway, just some stories. Yeah, yeah. So you, you wow. mentioned that you play baseball. Mm -hmm. And play football, yeah. right? And so, which sport did you like the most? Baseball. Interesting. Baseball, baseball was my actual scholarship. For hmm, you in only, college. You can only take one, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, baseball was your scholarship. What did you end up playing the most? Football. Football. Until I started falling apart like a, a skeleton in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I have so many permanent damage body parts really i have two 
Dead folks' Achilles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My chest cavities have floating bone spurs, and I've had seven concussions. Yeah, it was time to stop. <laughs> and we talking about this man's <laughs> yeah, thumb. it was time <laughs> to <laughs> stop. Football is – that's before CTE. So maybe that's why I did some of that He's crazy stuff. Well, it's not before I CTE. Know, before <laughs> <laughs> CTE been a thing. Well, yes. it's like the knee. They used to just say his yeah. knee is hurt. Then all of a sudden, when you get older, it's like his ACL, MCL. That stuff's always yeah. been there. You yeah. just never knew what it they was. They just say you had a bad yeah. knee. But, no, I, 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 uh, I enjoyed – you know, I knew I was pretty good in baseball which is one of the reasons I transferred my high school. Um, I, I was playing like two grades up, and it, it was just something I was – It was a, you know they say you blessed with something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, I could hit a – baseball is the hardest sport to play. It, you know, I've, I've, I've played every sport, every sport. And baseball, someone is 60 feet from you before they stretch out. Mm-hmm. And they throwing a rock at you 95 miles an hour over a little bitty space, and you have a round instrument trying to hit something round in play. And directing where it goes. And you know how I also know that's true? You can fail one out of every three times and make $100 million playing baseball. You batting mm-hmm. 300. Yeah. So, but football. Three out um, of ten. I should have listened and just stayed with baseball, man. But football took me. I did some nice things with football. Yeah. Where, uh, what was the peak football? Well, um, I wasn't drafted, you know, because of injuries. Yeah. But I was my size. I was I was about ten, twelve pounds heavier. My size as a safety, I was kind of short. But my, I, I ran a four, four, five at that speed, Jeez, and crazy. so that got me into a camp. And I get to pick my camp, and I'm a cowboy fan. So unfortunately, and, you know, star baby. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> I got to pick the camp, and that's the camp I went to. Yeah. And then, um, well, you I was, was on. This? A, this is back in the day, man. This was like early 90s, you know. And so yeah. I was a short a youngster. This before grad school, actually. And so um, before I started falling apart, I was on – they didn't call it um, practice squad. Then They called it scout team. There's maybe three, four, five of you. Scout you team. You know, this was a long time ago. Now they have practice teams yeah, and all this yeah. other stuff. But um, so it ended up happening. I got all broken up, and I had to, I had to get up out of there and go to grad school. And um, – I've struck I struck up a relationship with uh with a very high up high ranking person in the organization, you know, because Jerry had just just bought the team. Jerry Jerry, Jerry Jones, Jones, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Johnson was Jerry. my coach, Emmett Troy, all of them was Jimmy there. Jimmy Johnson, the one of the hosts. Um, of Darren Sunday. Wilson was there. He was our safety. That's what I emulated, you know. Um but it it was cool. But what ended up happening is um I had nothing to do with the following year, which is the year they balled out. Ninety three? Ninety two. And so the Super Bowl was in 93. Yeah. And the Super Bowl was in Pasadena. And guess who the halftime performer was? King of Pop, baby. Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. We smacked Buffalo. <laughs> but I had I had nothing to do with it. I, nothing. Yeah. But my relationship, I wrote a letter. And dude sent me like a jersey mm-hmm. with my name on it. I got a letter. It's framed in my, my guest room. Um, and then I got a... Um, a ring that they gave, uh, a Super Bowl ring that they gave out to all the staffers, all the coaches. Wow. The only, it's the same ring. It just doesn't have the real um, uh, middle piece, mm-hmm. the middle piece for that particular year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but I tell you, I got you to got my ring with me. But I'll tell oh, you. Oh, yeah, we need to see I'll that. I'll tell you. Um, to I had that. to pull it out my mom's clutches. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen that ring in years, man. For real. Man, I'm not yeah, wearing yeah, you want to pass the bag? Pass the bag. But um, We'll get that on camera. I'll tell you a funny story, though. So Jimmy Johnson, it's right here. Jimmy Johnson, um. He uh, was the coach, and I'll tell you something. You know how you hear stories about this dude? Thank you. Who um, You hear stories about you know him and Jerry's relationship, and I, I share one thing that was hilarious, man. So something bad. It was, it was all bad. It was a bad day. And so we all on a knee. A bad I had never seen Jerry Jones ever. Yeah. You know, it was a bad day. He was on this huge field, and – he was Jimmy was going bananas. He was going off. He, he was saying he was about to cut everybody, right? Oh, wow. And so, you know, I didn't have a chance on, on being there, but I was there. Everybody, you talking about like Michael Irvin? Nope. Troy Aikman. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett, nope. Emmett Smith. No, people that weren't paying attention. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so a helicopter comes into play, and it lands. It's not right up on us, but it lands close enough where everybody's hair was. I didn't have hair, but everybody's hair was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody, said not me. I shaved my hair a long time ago. But everybody's hair was moving except his. Mm-hmm. And it was Jerry. And he started walking. And I got to tell you, I was mesmerized, man. He was, like, walking like where he is, and I was just like this. And Jimmy caught other people looking, and he went off. And he said, he, he did the thumb back to Jerry, and he was like, I don't give a 
who he is. Mm. Pay attention to me or you'll be on the first bus out of here and I'm not paying for it. Yeah, no, and, no. But that's my one little, whenever, when, when things went sour with them and they were talking about their relationship, I was like, he had just got hired. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Know, it's crazy. Jim, but Jimmy yeah, this Johnson. Is my, this is my little, right, you know, my little special, uh, Super Bowl ring. It's ninety three, right? Yep. That's yes, yeah, Michael Irvin. Crazy. That's Troy Aikman. All that's that. everybody. So got Jeez, show the camera. Show the that. camera. The Super Bowl ring, man. Still has the official name on the Super Bowl and emblem. My name is uh, one of these right there on the side. Right the side. That's score crazy. And all that. Oh yeah, and it has a score in there, right, at the game. Yep. The VVSs on the top. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> the VVS's. <laughs> <laughs> the L's and the G's. Oh yeah, all of that. No, top. That's so that, great. That was man. a long time ago, man. But it's it's a good meal. I don't I don't wear this, but it it's just something, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's memories. That's life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mike Jack. I should have stuck, stuck the baseball, man. I, I don't have. I should have stuck the baseball. Should stuck the baseball because I'm 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 messed up. <laughs> you know what my uh, what's it called? My childhood homie actually just got signed to the Pirates. Dang. Oh yeah, he. Uh, That's really cool. I remember he was talking about baseball for we was kids. I used to go to his house in Benicia. He's my best friend growing up. Um, he's I always try, I always used to try to get him to play basketball because I like I like basketball, but he like baseball. I don't like baseball. He was I don't like playing it, and he's like, no, nah, nah, I just want to play baseball. Da da da. Oh, you better go to the league, then, bro. Yeah, you, he did it. He did sure it. enough. He, he did. did it. He did. It. I'm and they could use all the help they can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Bro, but I'm I'm proud of him, man. For real. Hey, that's that's a big accomplishment, man. Yeah. Because you think about each team has rookie league. A, double A, triple A. Yeah. And they all got like 35 people on the team. Yeah. And that's each team. So you think about how exactly. hard it is to get up on there. And, and he actually he had a, uh, an injury. I think it was either his rotator cuff or he uh, dislocated his shoulder. One of the two. When? Uh, like a couple of years ago or uh, something like that. Oh, so he came back from it. That's yeah, really he cool. came back. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, psh. Yeah. The life of Bill, man. <laughs> no, really. The life <laughs> of Bill. Somebody needed to follow you around with just cameras all the time. The life like how Cootie things. did, like how Cootie did Kanye. <laughs> document, <laughs> things, document this man's life. Things need to calm down for me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's but I'm awesome. glad I'm here, man. Um, I really want students to know about the office of the dean of students. Yeah, yeah. Um, lasting. I, I want them to know that, you know, my door is open. I plan on having lunches with students. I plan on having focus groups with students. I'm already on agendas this week for these huge leadership groups just to introduce myself and say, this is what we're about. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be visible. You know, you see me walking around a game or something, I'm going to be visible because it really, there needs to be an advocate, a true advocate, where they can say, you know what, I don't have time for this. I'm going to the dean of students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is what is bothering me. You know, um, I'm, I'm hurting in this area. I need this. I'm having trouble mm-hmm. where I can help be that, that liaison. And then also – from a, another aspect of just having a conversation and being something they can, someone they can talk to and listen to that's confidential. Yep. Um, and I'm always going to be myself. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's going to be for sure. So I'm be approachable, and uh, I'm just I'm just excited to be here. And then the the folks who are leading the units um, are incredible. You know, I've obviously met with all of them, and they're doing wonderful work. And I'm just excited to learn more about their team, but really how all this stuff is going to mesh together. <clears throat> Um, and then bringing my own stuff in. Yeah, mm-hmm. you understand. You know. So uh, what would you say you're, you're most looking forward to in the, either the next academic year, a few years, uh, whatever it is? It, what's the thing that you're most looking forward to stepping into this position, and what are you most excited about accomplishing? It's a few things. The first one is I cannot wait until I learn all these acronyms. <laughs> Man. I don't know why. <laughs> when I'm not in a meeting, I'm in a meeting like – <laughs> what are you talking about? You know a B C M S. He was down at the V A H J, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna write this down, and I'll come back to you. Yeah. But but no, seriously, um, that's important to me. But I'm most excited about putting my own stamp on what we're, where we are mm-hmm. and taking off. And the reason I'm excited about it is because the stops that I've had, mm-hmm. be it out in Boston, be it at Madison, be it wherever. Um, that's what I've done, and it's mm-hmm. worked. I've done reorganizations of student affairs, I've created student affairs. We have that. We have an incredible leader in student affairs. Yep. So I'm focusing on the areas that are more serious touch points for students and how we all work together yeah. because I don't yet know how we all, how these offices are all working together. And so that's the part I'm excited about. But I, I have a lot of ideas, man, and I, I really, I've already shared a couple with some of the, the folks, and they've liked them. Um, no idea is a bad idea. It may be a situation where it doesn't work at that time, or we can tweak it, or we don't have the resources. We try a different yeah. thing. But I'm just looking forward to it. I'm just glad to be here. Um, got a lot of energy for this position. 
and I love the Vice President of Student Affairs perspective on things, and I, I was so excited when I got the offer. Um, I don't top, take applying for positions lightly. Mm -hmm. People constantly asking me, why would you come all the way to California from Chicago? And I was mm -hmm. like, I've never looked at the same thing when I went to Boston. I look at the position, I look at the environment, I look at where can I get in where I can fit in. Mm -hmm. Because yep. at the end of the day, if there's one thing that we all should remember, and I'll never lose sight of this, the students here chose Sac State. Mm -hmm. They have choices. And if they are facing barriers and no one's hearing them, if they are unhappy with their situation and they're introverted and don't really know who to trust, mm -hmm. yeah. we got to fix that because yeah, that student can say, you know, I'm gonna go up the road. Yeah, yep. they chose Easily. to come here. Exactly. And so that's important to me, and that's and that's gonna be something that we're gonna definitely have more conversation about. Yeah, that's Absolutely. awesome. And, and I feel grateful. I don't know about you, Malachi, but to work in the office that I work in, to be able to be around, you know, Dr. Mills, who's just amazing, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. in, in terms of student first. You know, yep. putting the students first and putting, you know, just simply caring. That's yep. one thing that you know with Dr. Mills is just he just cares so much about everything. And he, yeah. you know, does, does sometimes does too much, but it's it's all in good heart, you know. Yeah. So he's always stretching himself out to be able to, you know, help and, and mend everyone. And it goes that extends to Noel, who is the reason we yeah. I'm graduate I graduated. I love Noel, man. And the reason you know he working stuff out to to Michael, who's you know our producer and and helping me expand my knowledge and growth in mm -hmm. different areas of um you know uh, multimedia and things of that nature. We're just working Susie, a really great to, office, yeah, man. just everyone in our office is just so welcoming when it comes to yeah. growth, having a growth mindset. And, and I think that's what it comes down to is having yeah, a growth, having mindset. growth mindset. mindset. When you work in a university, you have to. And your job, you know, in serving the students is is continually trying to grow, continually trying to improve and, and make the student experience better as, as long as you're working in student affairs. Exactly. Well said. And, and the other piece is when you hear the term student-centered, <laughs> and mm -hmm. one of the things I really hope is this, the students that see this is it's going to spread the, the wealth about more of an understanding about the dean of students mm -hmm. office um, where we are they see me sp i'll say hi to you hopefully you say hi back you know we're, we're, that's a hit or miss lately we'll figure it out that's funny we'll figure it out it's more visible you know i've been here i haven't been here for a month yet but the student center piece when you when you hear that term and that that applies to the, the institution itself as academic student affairs is truly meeting the student where he or she is at mm -hmm and catering your services and your perspective to that student. Mm -hmm. Like your experience and your experience are gonna be different, let's say, okay? And they were different. So from a student center perspective, helping you and helping you, but at the end of the day, making sure that it's equitable in terms of did we meet your needs? Yeah. And that's what's really yeah. important. And that, that permeates to the classroom too, where the faculty should be doing the same thing. They should be, you know, students, you know, that, that you know, aren't well-versed in one particular area, how do we get them to the point from an equity perspective? And yeah. I, I told you I travel with an equity lens, man. Everything, my life is a big, big old PLE, mm -hmm. possible logical explanation before I go off. Mm -hmm. So if I see something crazy, someone exhorting privilege or someone taking advantage of a student, and someone, um, a student tells me something that's just, I know is out of pocket, mm -hmm. then a possible logical explanation is maybe X happened to this faculty member and they're going to come forth with an apology. Let's play it out. Or possible logical explanation is this faculty member, I don't know what you're saying, faculty member. This this um, worker at the at the university doesn't have um, the fort with to understand how to work with different demographics, you know, and that sort of thing. And I've been in environments like that in my own shop where we've had to bring in training and talk about culture and talk about climate. And I know all that's driven from the, the VPSA. But for me to get in where I can fit in and have authentic conversations in particular in this space is, is going to be really, really important. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. It's great to it's great to see you, you know, articulate the ways that you want to, you know, make an impact on this campus. And it's um, I mean, it's an honor to be be here, be able to allow you to share that message. That's, I mean, that's partially what our goal was as the mic up students is, yeah, be a voice for you the know, students. be a voice for the students. And if, if students have. I mean, we don't speak for all students, but if students have concerns, issues, they can reach out to us, and, and we have that connection to those higher up, higher up, like the Dr. Mills, like you, like you know, all the other people that work in our office that can actually help you with those situations. So that's one of the things is is having our entertaining conversations, but also an understanding that you know the students can really come to us for anything. Yeah, our you inboxes guys, are this, open. This is great, man. What you guys are doing, man. Yeah, you know, that. I've enjoyed watching um, some of the past episodes, and I, I just think it's it's so important, and I hope this can really grow. 
Absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah. trying. We're trying. You know, we're getting kicked out of here, but we're going to find somewhere <laughs> else, all right? We're going to be outside. We're going to be wherever we got to be to make sure that the mic Up Season 4 goes along. You know, we got some great episodes coming this season. Super excited. I mean, including this one as well. But yeah, we got yeah we got some some big stuff coming. Well, I appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah, man. It was an, it was an honor fun, to have man. you on. Appreciate Absolutely, let a story, let Super Bowl <laughs> ring, man. you know. All of that. Going back <laughs> in the vault. <laughs> yeah, going back in the vault. Yes, sir. <laughs> back in the safe, lock it up. Most definitely, well. Yeah. Shout out to Michael. Man, producer. Yeah. In the I was gonna say which Michael you shout out? Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Michael Both. the producer. Michael Jackson, that's my dude, man. I, I walk that's around the house singing. Can't go wrong. <laughs> can't go wrong. Right. But that was another episode of the Mic'd Up Students. If you stay this long, we appreciate it. We, we we take the feedback, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever you want to say. Let us know in the comments. YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all of that. We live now. My, Malachi, you got anything to say? You handled it, man. Come on now. You know how I always yeah. do. Till next time, we appreciate you for listening. All right to y'all.